three, two, one. Dear Lord, we thank you for the gift of life today. You allow us to have another day to praise you and see your glory. Thank you for the love and protection, especially this time of pandemic. Bless us, Father, with your wisdom as we begin our class. Help us to focus our hearts and minds on what we are about to learn. Inspire us by your Holy Spirit as we think and listen. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. Lord, we thank you and let your will be done in our lives. We ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Water Accountants and Business Enthusiasts. Welcome to our second session in our Synchronous Learning. For our attendance checking, kindly comment your complete name in the chat box. So we have here the GAAP or the generally accepted accounting principles its purpose is to standard accounting concepts principles and procedures now when we say GAAP it is a uniform set of accounting rules meaning they served as the ground rules to guide accounting practitioners in recording measuring and reporting financial statements they provide us assurance that information being communicated to users is prepared in a proper way. So it must be neutral, it must be relevant, fairly presented, no? Financial statement. Accounting concepts and principles are rules of accounting that should be followed in preparation of all accounts and financial statements. Okay, very good. So you have there the word preparation. This will serve as our guide, no? On how to record when to record and what to record now i have here a business scenario about a certain or local business the lockdown pet shop so kung nakikita niyo yung scenario ay tungkol sa isang pet shop no na ang may ari sino si dodong di ba siya ay ano nangangailangan ng solusyon sa kanyang problem so what is his main problem Magkano daw ang dapat na total expenses na i-record ni accountant? Is it really 60,000? Or is it lower than 60,000? We can answer the question later, no? After we discuss the different accounting concepts and principles. Let's proceed. What is the first principle? Kindly read, Miss Marcin. Yes, ma'am. Business entity principle. A business enterprise is separate and distinct from its owner or investor. Example, if the owner has a department store, the cash of the department store should be reported separately from personal cash. Okay, so in other words, business entity is basic principle in accounting and assume that business activities are being separated from business to his or her personal transactions. So, a standard dictates, no, a business is an entity that is separate and distinct from its owner. Therefore, the business has its own entity and those transactions arising from personal should be separated or must be excluded from the business. So, for example, is if you have a family business, no? Yung father mo is the manager, tapos yung mother mo is the accountant of your business. Tapos one day, inutusan ka ng parents mo na bumili ng mga office supplies sa national bookstore, for example. Tapos bumili ka ng items worth 7,000 para sa business. At bumili ka din ng 5,000 worth of personal items. Ang tanong dito, magkano ba ang dapat i-record ni accountant sa kanyang book 
of account? Is it 7,000, 5,000, or the sum total 12,000? Any idea from the group? No, basing on this concept, business entity. You may raise your hand if you have an answer. Luis, what is the answer? 7,000, ma'am. Okay, why 7,000? What is our explanation? Kasi pare, ito ang personal na ipalit na to para sa business na to. Para dili magka-kotak-kotak. Wow, very good. That is a good answer. Let us give him a virtual clap. And let's proceed to the second. We call it the time period principle. Kindly read and give example, Jamaica. Time period of principle. Financial statements are to be divided into specific time intervals. Example, Philippine company are required to report financial statements. Okay, so in other words, this principle allow users, now you know already who are these users, both internal and external, to obtain timely information in order to serve on basis in making good economic decisions for future activities. Now, there are two accounting period. Now, we have the calendar year and the fiscal year. Kindly differentiate the two, Miss Jemima. Um, sa calendar year, ma'am, kay nag-start siya sa January 1, then nag-end siya sa December 1. While ang fiscal year kay any consecutive 12-month period that ends on the final day of any month except December. So, bali, dili siya mag-start sa January 1. So, maybe later January 1. Then, dili po siya mag-end of December 31. Ma. Very good explanation on that. Now again, ha, when we say calendar, we're going to talk about the business year. So normally, it will start always January 1 and it will end by December 31. For fiscal year, no, as what you've said, it will start later, no? So meaning after January 1. Very also important to consider nga kaninga principle is evidently shown in the heading of every financial statement. So whenever you prepare financial statement, naagin na siya nakabutang sa third line. What about the next accounting principle? What is that? Kindly read and give example. The going concern principle business is expected to continue indefinitely. Example, when preparing financial statements, you should assume that the entity will continue indefinitely. Okay, so in other words, this tells us that the business continues to operate indefinitely. So, basta mo yun that indefinitely, there's no definite or specific time. Diba? So, that's why accountants prepare financial statements with the assumption that business continues to exist in the future. So, for example, Annie, no, another example is if a company closes no, one of its branches and continue to operate with other, the company is going concern. Nga man? Because the shutting down of a small business does not impair the ability of other business or branches to operate. Diba? Dili man siya makapekto, especially if your business is a big business such as corporation or multinational corporation. So, yasyum lang natin na ang company ay magtutuloy ng kanyang operation at hindi siya magsasara agad-agad. Mao na ang going concern principle. Kaya ikaw bilang accountant, patuloy rin ang pag-record ng mga transactions ng business. Okay, this is the going concern principle. What about the next principle? Kindly read. Retire unit principle. Amounts are stated into a single monetary monetary unit. Example, Jollibee should report financial statements in pesos even if they have a store in the United States. Okay. So, remember that money as a medium of exchange is chosen as the common unit of quantifying business activities. So, in the Philippines, business activities are measured, of course, in Philippine peso. 
No, the peso currency is assumed to remain relatively stable over the years disregarding inflation. So only those transactions which are financial, again, di balik-balik na to, nga only those transactions which are financial in nature are recorded in the Philippine peso currency. Those non-financial transactions are not recorded. So last meeting, I provided you some examples of non-financial and all of those will not be recorded in our book. Okay, so I hope it's understandable that in monetary unit, we will only be using one or single unit. So another example class, if your supplier is a medical supplier, no? Tapos, bumili sila ng mga medical equipment sa Korea para sa customer nila dito sa Philippines. Siyempre, ang currency ng Korea ay won. Di ba? Tama? So, pag na-record mo no, as an accountant, yung transaction at yung amount dapat in peso. So, dapat i-convert muna yung won to peso. So, ganun ang pag-record. Okay, next principle, we have the objectivity. Kindly read and give example. Objectivity principle. Financial statements must be presented with supporting evidence. Example, when the customer pay Jalbi for their order, Jalbi should have a copy of the receipt to represent as evidence. In this principle, it's very understandable, no? Because you will record accounting statements based on the most reliable and available useful data so when we say reliable data these are very verifiable when we confirmed by independent observers so ideally accounting records are based on information that flows from activities documented by objective evidence so sa accounting hindi pwedeng mag record ka na walang ebidensya so dapat may ipakita kang evidence Kasi without this principle, accounting records would be based on opinions lang. No? And there is therefore subject to disputes. So magkakaroon ng mga disagreements. Kaya napakaganda na sa accounting mayroon talaga siyang objectivity principle. So dapat lahat ng nirecord mo ay may supporting evidence. So, just like may mga resibo na naka-attach doon sa iyong mga documents. Kasi hindi pwedeng mag-record ka ng hula-hula lang na amount. So, dapat may basis ka kasi ito ang titignan ni auditor. May auditor sa bawat kumpanya. So, titignan niya kung tama ba ang iyong na-record o supporting document. Kaya may gagawin din silang report base sa ginawa mo. Okay, that is what we mean by objectivity principle. Okay, let's proceed to the next principle. Who want to read? Any volunteer? Yes, you raise your hand, Nikki. Kindly read and give example. Cost principle. Accounts should be recorded initially at cost. Example, when Jolly buys a cash register, it should record that record the cash register at its price when they bought it. Okay, meaning the word cost itself class is the most objective, quantifiable, and verifiable basis. No? This concept actually tells us the value of asset at the time of acquisition. When we say time of acquisition, by the time na binili mo, yun ang ibig sabihin nun. No? It's the cost of the asset with no adjustments in value in the next periods upward for inflation so this is also known in accounting as the historical cost another example no is if you purchase laptop it should be recorded at the price it was purchased at dapat i-record mo rin ito sa kanyang original cost hindi yung inflation cost niya okay don't forget that one again ha please be reminded that i-record mo ang asset na nabili mo sa original amount i am referring to the cost Cost is an original amount of item no, at the time na nabili mo siya. Dili gita, maglibog, basta, kabaluta sa principle. Sa yun ra kay maghatag og answer as long as ang principle atong masabtan. Next is accrual accounting principle. Accrual accounting principle. 
Revenue should be recognized when earned regardless of collection and expenses should be recognized when incurred regardless of payment. On the other hand, the cash basis principle in which revenue is recorded when collected and expenses should be recorded when paid. Cash basis is not the gener is not the generally accepted principle today. Example uh, is when a barber finishes performing his services, he should record it as a revenue. When the barber shop receives an electricity bill, it should re it should record it as an expense even if it is unpaid. Okay. Thank you, Kenneth. Now, when we say accrual, it requires all transactions to be recorded when they occur rather than cash is received or paid. So, sa accrual, walay cash nga involved. Again, ha? Kaya nga naman, ma'am, ang cash principle is not the generally accepted principle today, as of today. Dili na na siya ang ginagamit nato. So, we'll be focusing on accrual. Ma'am, unsa ang duha ka concept sa accrual? Revenue recognition. So, sa revenue recognition, sa service type of company, magre-record ka ng income has been earned. Take note ha, you have to record income that has been earned regardless of collection as long as na-deliver yung item or naka-render ka ng service if it is a service business, that's the time na mag-record ka ng what? Income. Pero, Kung hihintayin mo pa na matanggap yung cash, meaning at the time of collection, you are not using accrual anymore, but it's cash basis. So take note ha, there's no involvement of cash here. For revenue recognition, mag-record ka na agad ng income basta na-deliver na yung item or goods o naka-render ka na ng services sa yung customers. Okay, that's revenue recognition. The second concept under accrual is expense recognition. So, for expense recognition, nire-recognize natin ang expense kung saan talaga ito ginastos, hindi kung kailan ito binayaran. Example for this is, uh, no for the two concepts, a business owned by Kenneth, no for example, offers laundry services. So, noong January 25, nag-render siya ng laundry services to Jemima. Tapos, si Jemima nagbayad ng kanyang laundry services uh, noong February 5. So, in this situation, revenue is earned kailan? Kailan, Kenneth? Kailan siya na-earn? At the time of rendering services or at the time of payment? At the time of rendering services. Kailan nangyari yon? January 25 or February 5? Uh, January 25, 8th oh, Okay. No? So, hindi naman siya nag-advance payment sa'yo. Nag-render ka muna, di ba, ng services mo. So, noong January 25, yun yung time, no? Na kailangan mo mag-record ng, ano, income. Kasi, na, na, ano, na-render mo na. Meaning, income has been earned already, no? On January 25. Hindi mo nahihintayin yung February 5 na mag-record ka. So, I hope na uh, naintindihan niyo yun. No, in this situation, revenue is earned again on January when Kenneth rendered his laundry services and not on February 5 when he received cash payment from Jemima. Okay? So, madali lang talaga siyang intindihin class kung nauunawaan natin yung konsepto or guideline ng accrual principle. Okay, next, let's proceed to the next principle. Marcin, kindly read and give example. Cost should be matched with the revenue generated. Example, when you provide tutorial services to a customer and there is a transportation cost incurred related to the tutorial services, it should be recorded as an expense for that period. Okay. So, anong dapat natin i-match? I-match natin lahat ng nakuha nating expenses sa mga bagay kung saan tayo kumita. So, base sa example na binigay, ano yung source of income dito? Yung professional fee, no? Through tutorial services. At ano yung gastos niya? The transportation cost. ba? So, at the time of recognition of your income, for example, uh, ngayon, no? ngayong taon na 2022, nag-record ka ng income kasi nagturo ka sa mga bata worth, let's say, 10000 Pero may mga incurrence of expenses ka rin, di ba? May outflow of cash like 
uh, gumastos ka ng mga office supplies, no? ginamit mo sa iyong pagtuturo. So yun, dapat i-record mo for the year 2022. Take note ha, ang i-match natin yung income and expense for a specific period. So then ha, kung nag-record ka ng income sa taong 2022, dapat mag-record ka rin ng expenses for the year 2022. What about the next? Disclosure principle. Kindly read and give example. Uh, let me call. June, kindly read. Disclosure principle. All relevant and material information should be reported. For example, the company should report all relevant information. So, yung company natin, dapat i-disclose or i-reveal ba? No? When we say disclosure, may revelation. No? Dapat i-reveal lahat ng information about such changes na mga bagay-bagay sa company. Like, uh, may changes on the policy, on revaluation, on inventory. No? Dapat lahat iyong ipakita para hindi magiging kaduda-duda o hindi magiging fraud. Kasi yung mga auditor na mag-audit sa atin, they are so very intelligent in asking questions. So, magaling sila doon sa pag-i-investigate, no? cross-examination and different accounts. So, para hindi maging kaduda-duda at magiging maganda ang ating dignity at credibility, integrity ng business, dapat i-disclose natin lahat-lahat. Okay. So, I hope you will do the same, no? Especially if you will become an accountant in the future, a manager in the future, you have to be honest in everything. Next, what about conservatism principle? Kindly read Gian, give example. Conservatism principle, also known as prudence and income should not be observed while liabilities and expenses should not be underst understated. Example, in case of dope, dope expenses should be recorded at higher am amount. Revenue should be recorded at a lower amount. Okay. So, in other words, conservatism principle tells us to choose the worst case scenario, no? When aced with some uncertainties. So, given two options in the valuation of transactions, the lower amount should be recorded rather than the higher value because this principle class directs accountant to choose the alternative option or the best option to have a lesser impact to company's income. Meaning to say, mas mabuti daw na i-record ang estimate ng total na amount na kikitain ng company ay mas mababa kesa actual na kikitain nito or income. But for expenses, dapat mag-record ka ng what? Ng higher amount, no? For expenses, if you are doubtful for that expenses, kesa mababang value. What about materiality? Kindly read, Marcin. Materiality principle. In case of assets that are immaterial to make a difference in the financial statements, the company should instead record it as an expense. Example, a school purchased an eraser with an estimated useful life of three years. Since an eraser is immaterial relative to assets, it should be recorded as an expense. Okay, no? It depends on the size and nature of the item judged by particular circumstances of its omission. So, in deciding whether an item or an aggregate items in a particular is a material, the nature and size of the item are evaluated together. So, when we say material, Pasabot anak class is malaki, no? Malaki yung kanyang value or halaga. Meaning, important siya pag sinabi nating material. Pag immaterial naman is maliit lang kanyang kanyang halaga or it's not that important or significant. So, depending on the circumstances, either the nature or the size of the item could be determining factor. So, take note that in materiality principle, 
only material items should be presented separately in the financial statements or in other words dapat isa-isahin ang pagkaka-present lahat naman ng immaterial items or yung maliliit lang na value ay dapat nating itotal so para mas maintindihan niyo for example yung maliliit na amounts no example lang kan yung mga ball pen yung lapis yung papel yung eraser yung total value niya ang dapat nating i-record since immaterial siya Okay, nakuha niyo yon. Tapos, pwede natin gamitin yung isang account title na office supplies para sa lahat ng na-mention na items. Pero kung material na yung item, for example, machinery na nagkakahalaga ng 1 million or equipment na 2 million, dapat isang item lang yun, no? For example, machinery, 500,000, equipment, 1 million. So, ganun siya. Kasi material yung item. So, isa-isahin mo siya kasi material. Pero pag immaterial, get the total. It's considerable, no? In this concept. Pwede siya. Kasi yung immaterial, marami sila eh, di ba? So, you have not to be specific here. I-general mo na lang, tapos kunin mo yung total. Okay? That is materiality principle. Now, we're done with the principles and concepts of accounting. No, very challenging, but I know you're enjoying learning. Let's go back to the previous scenario I presented, no, the problem of Dudong. I hope we can help him. Diba? So, ano nga ang problema niya? He's not sure if he should rec uh, include or record all of the following items as expenses. I will give you one clue here. Yung withdrawals, no, yung last item na withdrawals worth 5,000 pesos is not part of expense kasi yan ay factor that can affect equity, not expenses. So, 5,000 ay hindi nakasali. Ang tanong ngayon, aside sa withdrawals, ano pang item ang hindi kasali sa ating computation? Okay. To make this more challenging, using your class point up for one minute, give me your answer. Everyone should participate. This oh, i-apply natin yung ating natutunan. Wow! Ang bilis. Okay, so I will be reading your answers. May sumagot dito na salary, may sumagot ng insurance, Utilities expense at home, tatlo sila. At may sumagot <laughs> ng final answer kung magkano ba dapat i-recognize. Okay, so for salary expense class, no, going back to the problem, salary expense is part of the company's expense. So hindi siya kasali sa personal. So we will include salary. The same with insurance. Kasi kung nakikita niyo dyan, silent siya, di ba? Hindi specify ng problem kung ano ba yung para sa shop or sa business or kung ano yung personal. Hindi naman sinabi dyan na yung salary expense is personal. So, what is the general rule in accounting? If it is silent, we have to consider that it is part of the business. So, ano yung mga part ng business dito? Salary, rent, at insurance. Dito tayo magtatalo ngayon sa utilities expense. Kasi nag-specify siya na yung at home daw is worth 10000 or the personal no utilities expense. But for the business or at shop, it's also the same, 10000 So ang tanong, ano at magkano ang dapat i-exclude sa expenses? Okay, the correct answer is 10,000 no for utilities expense at home kasi yung 10,000 pesos class yun ang sa personal ni Dodong. Hindi natin siya isali. Bakit? Ano bang principle ng accounting na ating ma-apply dito that we have to separate the business and personal? Can it ano nga yung principle na nagdi-discuss about the separation of business and personal transactions? Business Entity Principle. Okay, very good. It's the Business Entity Principle. 
at may sumagot na ng tama no kung magkano lang ba dapat ang e record ni Dodong sa kanyang book of account it must only be 45,000 pesos very good